Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Monday now, the 17th of November, 2025. Good as always to be with you. It's been a while. Haven't had much to talk about since Melissa. Nothing to really speak of. And now we are getting ready to put the hurricane season on the shelf, so to speak. So I thought I would look back and examine this pretty strange season that we've had. And uh, then we're going to look ahead to the future, including a big announcement of something that I'll actually drop tomorrow for the public that we're going to talk about this evening with our Patreon folks, something I am very, very, very excited about, and I can't wait to tell everybody tomorrow. But tonight we're going to do a little Patreon Zoom meeting. I'll talk about that at the end of today's update. First, though, let's revisit the strange season. Let's take a look at the Wikipedia here. Uh, great resource, and um, I use it once in a while for research purposes. Everything is nice and laid out. All the people that helped to build this, we appreciate you. One thing I want to look at is this table over here. I'll outline it for you. These are the seasonal forecasts. And look, I'm not going to go through every one of these agencies that we'd be here for 90 minutes. I want to focus on CSU. They've been around the longest, and we'll just leave it at that. All right? So way back in April, 17, 9, and 4. 17 named storms was predicted, nine of those becoming hurricanes. Four of those hurricanes become in Category 3 or higher. We ended up with 13, 5, and 4, so the major hurricanes. Uh, we'll, let's see, we'll circle that in green. They got that right. Uh, a few shy, four shy on the hurricane side, and four name storms shy there. Otherwise, it was pretty good forecast overall, especially the major hurricane side. And that's very important because... Our major hurricanes are categories 3, 4s, and 5s, and we had three category 5s this year, part of that overall strangeness. It's those major hurricanes that tend to produce most of the damage historically, and it makes sense. You have a lot more energy getting expended, a lot more impacts certainly could be expected, and that is certainly what we saw this year, especially with Melissa and our friends in Jamaica, parts of Cuba, the Bahamas, and even Bermuda, right? So all the other agencies on there, everybody over forecast numbers wise, but the A score, the accumulated cyclone energy was pretty much right where we need to be a little bit above average, I guess you'd say. Um, and that came in, I mean, just a little bit lower than most of the expectations were, but still a pretty big A year. And here's a really good way to look at it. And I want to see if I can zoom in on this. And yes, I can. This is a screenshot that I did from Brian McNoldy over on my Facebook that uh, I thought I would screenshot and post in here for today. So yeah, it was unusual. I chose the synonym strange. Uh, strange and unusual. We could put them both in there, right? We had the least amount of ace, even though it was about 132. I'll just write that in over here. Since 2022. So the least since 2022, but it was still above average. The average is about eh, 120 plus or minus. No U.S. hurricane landfalls for the first time in 10 seasons. So that's good on one hand, but, you know, bad for our friends elsewhere because they took the brunt. The latest first name storm since 2014. It took a while to get everything going this year. And then this one really jumps out. Three Cat 5 hurricanes. Last time we did that was 2005. And we even, uh, we had more in 2005. I think we had four Category 5s back then. And this is what really is interesting to me, and uh, since he's got the sort of yellow color, I'll use this orange. So your average daily ace kind of follows this deal right here, right? Look at what we see. There's your first Category 5, there's your second Category 5, and your third Category 5. Your daily ace spikes were from, wait for it, those major hurricanes, at least three out of the four. You can see the other major hurricane uh, adding the ace right there. And uh, so we had four major hurricanes total. Melissa being the most impactful, obviously, a truly historic hurricane. So, yeah, it was kind of a really weird season. Now I want to go back to the Wikipedia page and look at this map. Now, this is not a final map. The National Hurricane Center will do one later on, and they'll publish it later in their end-of-the-year summaries and so forth. But this is pretty good. Again, whoever puts this together, I like the colors, everything. This is just a cool map, and I'm a map guy, right? So 
What do we notice here? Again, let's bring out that yellow. Uh, this one was Barry sitting over here, if I'm not mistaken. And the remnants of that got entangled with some upper level energy and created all that rainfall in Kerr County, killing scores of people. That, that was obviously very, very bad. Uh, then we had Chantal up here that brought flooding to parts of the Triangle area of North Carolina. And then everything else, United States wise, was, we'll just call it east of about 78 or so longitude. It's all this way. So all the ACE, all the impacts, everything, well not all of them, so we did have wave energy, but a majority of the impacts occurred east of the United States mainland, including the wind energy. But we did have Erin that came through here and sent out a bunch of swell activity, helped to level some houses out here on the Outer Banks, a very vulnerable area of the country, no doubt, but that energy getting exerted into the Atlantic didn't help things. But you notice this clustering all right through here in the western part of the Atlantic. Pretty strong ridge overall, you could infer, sitting out over here, driving our systems to the west, and then obviously some kind of troughing sitting up here. And that was your alleyway for pretty much everything to curve out into the Atlantic. Very interesting pattern and something we haven't seen in a while with absolutely no activity of hurricane intensity either in the Northwest Caribbean or the Gulf. Pretty amazing stuff and a much welcome change for people down in that area. I am, I mean, of course it is. It just goes without saying. So the accumulated cyclone energy is an important metric for the science field because it really tells us about the quality of what formed. We could have potentially had, because of the very warm sea surface temperatures in the background, double the named storms, close to 30 named storms. The water temperatures were anomalously warm, and it's just that the atmosphere didn't cooperate. So this could have been much larger, the list, and you could have still had an ace maybe 30, 40 points higher, and that's about it, because you'd have a lot more of these short-lived, low-quality, ace-producing, low-ace-producing storms. And we saw that in years like 2020. We had a pretty high ace that year, but we also had 30 named storms. But a lot of them, well, there's little two or three day, some of them one day, uh, one or two points of ace, and you can see that. Some of these this year, I mean, most of them were not even a point there. There's two with uh, Dexter, you have a three coming in there from Fernand. So this is just like a basketball team that has 13 players, and several of them stand out as your high scorers, 19, 26, and 34. You know, Melissa would be the high scorer on this co-ed basketball team. You add it all up, and we had an ace of about 132 this year, slightly above, um, eh, respectfully so, the long-term average again of around 120 plus or minus a few points, depending on which database you look at, whatever. So yeah, a little bit busier than average ace-wise, very unusual overall. Again, and this is today, November the 16th, 17th, this is always a day behind, but it kind of proves my point here. Uh, we do have a very warm Atlantic relative to average, and you look at this and say, in fact, let me just jump back on here. If I were to show somebody this, that was absent for the entire hurricane season. Maybe they were, I don't know, just in a coma or something. I don't want to get too macabre, but they were just not paying attention. And I said, if you look at this map, let me drop my telestration off of there. I said, hey, if you look at this, take a look, uh, what kind of season did we have? And they would look at that and go, well, you got that La Nina down there. That's interesting, and it's pretty much basin wide. All right, uh, pretty warm Atlantic, got that horseshoe shape. Uh, man, you probably would have had 17, maybe 20 named storms, probably 10 hurricanes, something like that. Just looking at this, one would think we had a very, very busy season, but we did not. Why? Well, that's hard for me to explain in just a couple of minutes, but a big part of it was once again, this term that has really come around into the more common vernacular, at least for us in the weather world, anticyclonic wave breaking. So you got the, this Rossby wave deal, your troughs and ridges. And the simple way to put it is every once in a while, you get this period where the big old ridge of high pressure will kind of break and it creates this upper level low and that retrogrades back and you get dry air drained down. It's just a big break in the overall system. The uh, Hadley cells out here, they get stretched and they break like a big balloon. 
And when you burst a balloon, the air goes out. But in this case, when you sort of break these big ridges, this anticyclonic wave breaking, as it's called, you allow this drier air to get intruded and pulled down from the subtropics in the north down into the tropics. And you start to really pinch off these tuts, these areas of what we call tropical upper tropospheric troughs. And that induces wind shear and the air coming together in the upper levels of the atmosphere, what we call convergence instead of broad divergence. We just didn't have the favorable atmospheric conditions this year to couple with the pretty favorable overall Atlantic profile. And Melissa proved that, that once we got something in an area with very warm sea surface temperatures, with a very favorable upper environment, and it was near perfect, but over a geographically fairly small area, I mean, this is not real estate wise, some giant region, but this was very favorable. And you got perhaps the strongest Atlantic hurricane in recorded history. And so it just goes to show you, same thing back in 2018 when Michael came in there. Just a small area was very favorable. And we got Category 5 Michael. So basin-wide, it wasn't very favorable atmospherically, um, but the ocean was certainly there for that particular parameter. Just something to point out, all right? So where do we go from here? Well, one thing that looks like it's mm, probably going to happen, more and more people talking about it, because the data supports it, I think we're headed towards an El Nino event next year, i.e. this right here, all this blue through here should vanish, and we start to get more westerly winds coming across the Pacific, and all this warm water that lurks over here, especially in the subsurface, gets transported east, and we get upwelling of that warm water, and we have an El Nino, the abnormal warming of the tropical Pacific out here. Now, what about the Atlantic Basin? Don't know. Some models are showing it a little cooler, some not. But overall, the consensus seems to be from this and the Euro and the overall signals, there's a lot of different models out there today. You guys know that. It's crazy. Looks like we're going to head into a, a weak El Nino next year by the time we get into the summer. So we'll figure all that out when we get there. Remember, 2023 had a substantial El Nino and a very busy Atlantic hurricane season. So not all, all, not all El Ninos are created equal. All right, what about just kind of wrapping things up? The good news is, as we come to the end of hurricane season and we're getting ready to start the big travel season, luckily all that shutdown stuff got resolved for the most part, that at least Thanksgiving and Christmas travel won't be a worse nightmare than it'll already be. Um, story for another day, but uh, travel-wise, weather-wise, not going to be too bad. Nothing down in the deep tropics to worry about. Once in a while, this time of year, you never know. You can, let's get that yellow back in there. You can get some shenanigans trying to develop somewhere in here. Not this time around. Way back in 1999, we had Linny, something like that, roughly, as the track. It went from west to east, and nothing like that to worry about this year. All right, so let me drop out and... Uh, yeah, so we'll be focusing more and more. I have to remember what the heck I'm going to talk about. We're going to be focusing more and more on generally lower 48 weather, not to exclude Alaska and Hawaii, but it's just easy to say lower 48 weather, and we'll be watching for big-time lake effect snows, maybe some nor'easters, especially on the Cape, possibly some big-time Sierra stuff. Those are the things that really interest me. I'm interested in pretty much anything weather, but yeah, those are my three big ones. An occasional plains blizzard would be interesting as well. Maybe some severe weather deep south uh, variety. We'll see. And then before you know it, we'll be right back to spring 2026 and severe weather season upon us in earnest. So between now and then, we'll be looking at the models. GFS, which is in need of a big overhaul, apparently. We'll talk about that in the future, too. Uh, but over the next couple of weeks or so, not much in the way of major storm activity. The good thing is I'm seeing, and you're seeing it too, lots of moisture and rain and everything and high mountain snow out west and in the southwest. That is great. It's great on so many levels. You just don't even know. It's good for the economy. It's good for the area out there, the environment, the people, the everything. Seriously, so that's a good thing to see. It's not all parched out there. And then those storm systems are kind of riding up and around this ridge that's got itself anchored in the east, roughly speaking, that's where I drew it. 
And so you just don't have a lot of major storminess or cold air in the east, at least for now. This is out beyond 10 days, so we'll just leave it at that. All right, if you are one of our patrons, on the funding side, we have about 2,100 total patrons that I guess you could say are like following Hurricane Track on Patreon, out of which about 460 are on the funding side. They're helping to finance all this, which we appreciate. So for those folks, I can't just open this up for everybody because we don't know everybody. We might have somebody that does something not very pleasant, right? You don't make Zoom open to the public. That's a horrible idea. So for our patrons, on the funding side, we're going to have a meeting tonight via Zoom, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to just kind of recap everything a little bit more in detail, all the severe weather stuff. We're going to go all the way back to January and just do a quick summary of all the work we've done this year. And then, of course, we got blanked on the hurricane season, a complete shutout, no U.S. landfalls. This is the least busy that I've ever been, hurricane-wise, in pretty much my whole career. That's the truth. Yet, I have stayed very, very busy because there's always lots of projects going on. Absolutely. And tonight, during this Zoom meeting, you guys will be the first to hear about this new thing, this new something, very big, very exciting, that I've really been looking forward to doing. It's now time to do it. I'll give you one hint. It's going to start on Monday, December 1st. That's the only hint I'll give you right now. And I am really, really excited about it. Tune in tonight if you are one of our patrons. It might have been a while since you logged in because we haven't had much hurricane activity to get you get your attention. I understand that. But it is important. So hopefully you'll zo tune in tonight, zoom in tonight, whatever, and join our Zoom meeting. I'll post the link in there. I'll post it on our Discord. You'll know. It's easy to do. And uh, we'll talk about this year and what's coming up for next year and get y'all's feedback as well. Actually, several big announcements. But anyway, I'll talk about that more tomorrow, where I'll do a recap of what I talked about tonight on the Zoom. I'll do a YouTube video about that tomorrow. All right? All right, let's get back over to the title page so I can let you find folks go about the rest of your afternoon. So there you go. I had a strange season pretty much done. I don't see anything popping up over the next couple of weeks. And that should be it for hurricane season 2025. But you don't go anywhere. No reason to hit unsubscribe. We're doing a lot of amazing things in the off-season. I hope you'll be a part of it, especially this new big announcement. I think you're going to be very excited about it, and I can't wait to tell you. All right, that's it from me. Have a good rest of your Monday afternoon, as always. Thanks for tuning in. From all of us at the Hurricane Track community, I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.